what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Revolution Week 2 online. I hope everybody's doing good. Are you doing good? I hope you're doing good. We're doing good here and excited about the possibilities of what God's going to do with this crazy everyone staying at home season right now. But just a few things kind of out of the gate, and then we're going to jump into week four of our parable series and look at another parable together. A uh, few things. So number one, I hope that this video is helpful for you guys. One, for you students, uh, especially um, sixth, seventh, eighth grade students, um, potentially getting together with your parents, getting together with your small group, getting together with friends, watching this, and then using the discussion guide that we also posted online. Everything is at westridge.com slash students. And we're going to be putting these out every single Tuesday to just keep everybody moving together, pressing closer and closer to Jesus, continuing to grow, continuing to stay connected in community. And so share this with friends, family, use this as a resource. Uh, and there's plenty of other resources out there, but we really hope that you're able to use this one in particular, especially for our middle school students and families and leaders. Uh, one other note is Rush Camp. We are still rolling with Rush 2020, and we hope that you're signed up or you've invited some friends to sign up. And just know that at the end of registration, which we've extended to March 29th, at the end of that, we're going to evaluate and just kind of make sure that we're able to move forward with Rush. If for some reason we had to cancel, we will fully refund everyone. So you can sign up with confidence knowing, hey, I'm not going to be out whatever monies that I put towards this camp. But we would love for you to come. We are believing that we're still going to have an amazing life-changing week in Daytona Beach, Florida. And we hope you come with us. All right. So those are some announcements. Now let's jump in to our series called Parables. And just as a quick reminder and a catch-up. A parable is a simple story used to teach a moral lesson or a spiritual truth. And so Jesus used these all the time. We've talked about this. And if you didn't watch the video last week, one of the things that was kind of the core to the teaching and the parable that Jesus used last week was the value that he has on you and on me his children, the people he made, he loves them so much and there's just so much value that he has for all of us. So it's important for us to know how valuable we are to our God. He values us like crazy. In fact, whenever we come to know who he is, there's a huge party in heaven. And that was one of the big parts of what we talked about last week. And one of the big things we wanted to start to remember and wrap our minds around. So today, the story is about value and about worth as well, but it's not about our value and worth, but it's actually about what we should value and worth. What should we put value in and what is the most valuable thing ever? And so our verses today are gonna be in the book of Matthew chapter 13, and it's verses 44 through 46. It says this, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. Then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When we found one, when he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and he bought it. Now, before we kind of break this down, just had a question for you. What is something that you really value? something you put a lot of worth in that you would say, you know what, out of all the things that I really enjoy, that I like, this is the thing I would kind of lift up among all of them. This is the thing I would say is the most valuable to me. Now, there's going to be a picture that's going to come on the screen, and this is a picture of my family. This is April, my wife, my oldest son, Cooper, my middle son, Jetson, and my youngest son, Everest. And I would say of everything on planet earth, this is who and what I would say is most valuable to me. It's my family. These four people are precious to me. I love them so much. I would give up so much for them. And there's things like that in your life. It could be a person. It could be a thing. It could be a hobby. It could be a passion of yours. I mean, there's so many things that this could be for you. And those things that we value are important. And in a lot of cases, they're God-given. My family is a God-given gift. He gives them to me 
and he blesses me with them, and hopefully I bless them. And it's an amazing thing that we have with our families and with the ones we love. But Jesus is making this statement about value and what we should value. And so he uses this story of a treasure and he uses this story of a pearl. And so we're going to just pull out the, here's the common things in both stories. And this is kind of the progression that they make. And so a diagram is going to pop up. We're just going to walk through this really quick. So heaven is the thing that we're talking about. It's the subject of the story. So heaven is hidden. And then it progresses from, okay, heaven's hidden. This valuable thing is hidden, but then it's found. So heaven is, is now found. The, the treasure's found. The pearl's found. And then that progresses to heaven is worth everything. Like the treasure, the pearl, whatever it is, the thing that's valuable, heaven in this situation, that is worth everything. I'm going to sell everything. I'm going to give up everything for this because it's more precious than anything else. And this is what Jesus is saying should be true of us, of what we value, of what we place worth in. So then you, you go back, right? And you think about, okay, that thing I value. And for me, it's my family. So if I was to sit down and look at my wife, my wife's right here. I'm like, baby, just want you to know I love you so much that I value you less than heaven. Now, see, in most scenarios, when you say something to someone you love, and in most cases, you would think a husband or a wife, they're like the most important person, right? And then if you look at them and say, you know, I love you, but I love something else more, that's not going to go down well, right? Then you think of my three boys, right? My three kids. Uh, I'm looking at Cooper. I'm like, Cooper, Jetson, Everest, just want you all to know, I love you, but not more than I love heaven. Now, you would think that might crush their little hearts, right? Like, Daddy loves something more than me? Are you kidding me? Well, here's what's unique about this. Because in most scenarios, if I was to say, boys, April, I love video games more than I love you. I would be a jerk, right? I would be an idiot. That would not make sense. But when I say heaven is more important, I value heaven over you. How does that not make me a jerk, right? How is that not idiotic? How does that not just look completely wrong? And why isn't it completely wrong, right? Because Jesus is saying heaven is worth everything. Well, let's break down what heaven is for just a second, okay? In its simplest form, right, the kingdom of heaven is where Jesus, where God is ruling and reigning, and where he is. It's his presence. Now, this is a future reality for all of us that know Jesus. We will be in heaven. We will be with him where he's ruling and reigning forever. But this can also be a present reality for us here and now as we have the Holy Spirit in us and we're allowing God to rule and reign in our life. Now, what's unique about heaven and what's unique about a relationship with God is when we know him and we realize who we are in him, it changes who we realize we are. Because we thought we were this one thing. Our identity was in this one thing and it was all jacked up and messed up by sin. But then we come to know Jesus and we realize, no, 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 we're free from sin. We're not sinners. We're actually redeemed. We're righteous. The righteousness of God, not, not because of us, but because of the righteousness of Jesus. And now we become this new creation. We become his son and his daughter. So now as a citizen of heaven, as a son and daughter of God, to know him and to be in his presence and allow him to rule and reign in our hearts and in our lives, that actually enables us to be who he made us to be. So if I put God before anyone and everything else, being in his presence, heaven, when I put this above everything else, it actually makes me who I was supposed to be. And in that, God calls me to certain things, right? God created marriage. He created this role of husband and wife. Now, for me to be a good husband, I actually need to know God. 
actually need to be in God's presence. I actually need to put God first. And when I do that, it makes me the husband I was made to be. And I'm actually a better husband to April now. I can love her better. I can put her first better. I can serve her better. So for me to say, baby, I love you, but I love God more. I put heaven above you. That's actually a good thing in this scenario. It doesn't make me a jerk. It actually makes me living in what God called me and made me to live in. And so I'm actually able to love her better. So her understanding that and knowing that, because she also knows God and loves Jesus, she's like, awesome, babe, me too. I, I love you, but I love God more. And because of that, we are actually tighter and closer and able to love each other better. My boys, it's the same thing. It's right, boys, I love God more. I, I love heaven more. But because I am going to be a father out of my relationship with God, it makes me love them and serve them and teach them and guide them better. And so to put heaven above everything else actually helps put everything else in perspective. It helps you live in the here and now more than it does otherwise. It helps you realize maybe where you should be putting your energy and effort. Because let's be honest, I know some of you out there are putting energy and effort, especially right now, into video games, right? You're like, if you were to look at your life, where does all of your time go? It all goes to Fortnite, right? Or it all goes to Apex Legends, or it all goes to Call of Duty, whatever it is. It's like that is taking every bit of your time. Well, it's not to say that those things are bad, right? But if everything is flowing out of your relationship with God, he's getting a chunk, a huge chunk of your time, but not just time. He has your whole heart, right? He has your whole life. Out of that, everything else flows. So even when you're potentially playing those games, the stuff coming out of your mouth on your headset is a little bit different because you're actually speaking out of this relationship that you have with God. You're speaking out of putting heaven above everything else. When you're speaking with your mom and dad, you're putting heaven above everything else. When you're interacting with your siblings or your best friends, when you're talking with people on group chats and video chats while we're all stuck at home, it's actually heavenly things coming out of your mouth because you value heaven above everything else because you value God above everything else. And being in his presence means more to you than anything. So you're willing to give up whatever. But God doesn't always say, hey, you have to give up this or you have to give up that. But you definitely need to put me on the throne of your life. You need to have me at the, the front of your priorities. You need to have me as the most valuable thing in your life because I am the most valuable thing. And when you get that, it helps you realize how much he loves you and it helps connect back to what we talked about last week, realizing how much he values you. And so one of the best things that we can do is to not only understand how much God values us and how much he loves us, but because he loves us, he wants us to help have our priorities in the right order. He wants us to help have the right value system in our life, right? Where the right things are valued most and the thing that's valued the highest and the most in our life worth everything is Jesus. It's knowing God, it's being in his presence, it's the kingdom of heaven. And so for you, for me, for our families, for our groups, for our church, for our community, I think the hope Jesus has for all of us is that we would value him. We would value knowing him, listening to him, living in the identity he's called us to as his sons and daughters. And we would value that above everything else. Everything else is worth giving up for that. But then as we do that, it actually enables us to focus on the things that matter and it enables us to do some of the things all of us want to do. We wanna be good friends, right? We wanna be able to be selfless and servant hearted and we wanna be able to put others first. And these are the things that come out of knowing and following Jesus, being in his presence, living as a citizen of heaven as opposed to a citizen of earth. And so as we wrap up this parable, the hope is we talk through this. What does this look like? How can we do this as Jesus followers? How can we do this in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? How can we do this when we're sitting at home right now, not able to interact the same ways we normally do? But 
more than anything, what am I valuing above everything? And my prayer for me and my prayer for you is that it would be God. It would be Jesus. It would be his kingdom. It would be being in his presence. The kingdom of heaven here and now, as well as the future forever. So I'm going to pray for us. And after I pray, we can talk more about it. You can break out those discussion questions. You can talk with friends. You can talk with family. Talk with your group leader. And really dig into this more. What does this look like? How can we do this? And how can we really value Jesus above everything else? So let's pray together. God, thank you so much for not only how much you value us, but how you help us to reorganize our values, what we hold up and what we view as worthy of everything in our life. And God, help us to put you above everything and everyone. Help us to want to be in your presence, not only for the future forever, God, but for here and now as well. And as we live as a citizen of heaven, that that would change the words that we use, the ways that we think, the, the feelings that we feel, God. Everything would come out of this because we value you above everything else. And in that, it would help us to be better friends. It would help us to be better brothers and sisters. It would help us to be better sons and daughters. It would help us to be better fathers and husbands. It would help us to be better wives. Whatever it is we are, wherever it is we find ourselves, help us to value you above everything else and to live as citizens of heaven. So God, I pray this for me. I pray this for my friends who are watching, wherever they're watching. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.